I entered the South London International Playwriting Competition at the Croydon Warehouse and I was a runner-up along with Abby Morgan. We were both runners-up. And you get your play read at the Warehouse Theatre, part of a kind of weekend festival. And it was that classic thing of I spent 15 years going around trying to write the first page of a really bad novel and thinking, if I can't be James Joyce, then there's no point. And then that business of handing something in and having somebody else, doesn't matter who it is, say, you can do this, it's okay, we'll read it out <laughs> in the theatre with people in it, was you know, in, in some ways as a sort of tells you it's okay and you're allowed to be a writer. I think I, I, I got a real suspicion actually that there are a lot of writers out there who think writing is so special that they'd actually never get round to it properly. If they could just drop that thing about it being so amazing and if I can't be James Joyce I'm no good, then I suspect there'd be a lot more great writers around actually. I think the key thing for me is, and this is what I do for myself, and it isn't a piece of advice, but I've learned it, is it really, really important before you start to talk about something, do as much work as you can on it. So, you know, deep research. I think the wrong way around, in terms of doing a project, is to have a conversation in a coffee bar with a commissioner and decide that this is a great idea and then plan when the first episode is going to be delivered. I think way, way better to have the idea, do all the thinking, do all the work, do all the research, so that when you have that conversation in the coffee bar, it, you really know what you're talking about. And then you don't run that risk of six months in discovering that you didn't want to spend five years of your life doing this actually, because you, know, you know after six months whether it's right or not. Much better to do that first. It's difficult to find the time to do that. But as advice to a, to a new writer, I would definitely say do that. If you've got the luxury of finding that time, grab it and use it and, you know, heavy research and go in there ready to those conversations so they really listen. So I know about it because I used to be a barrister and I spent 10 years at the criminal bar. So I've done, you know, lots of cases and so on. And um, uh, so... Uh, um, I understand it and, it and it gives me a lot of kind of writing choices. So at any given moment in any particular episode, I have, just because I know about it, 10 options where somebody who isn't from a law background would only have two. And that's a great luxury and it's obviously true of doctors who write about medical uh, dramas. So um, th that's a good starting point. Um, I think they're you know, naturally dramatic. There's a, you know, a, the, the, a trial itself always has a particular structure. So that's a kind of, um, it, it's, a, it's a successfully dramatic structure too, and it ends in a verdict, and that's great. Um, it, I think it means in terms of series that you can have other writers come in, um, and there's a natural structure that's there for episode four or episode two or whatever it is, which, which helps them, because I think it's a very difficult business actually coming in and writing somebody else's series. You know, I think it's really hard, that. Um, and it's a real skill, and I think legal series are a bit easier because of the natural trial structure, which has a beginning, a middle, and end all of its own. I, I think in, in, in terms of developing characters, um, I am, I suppose, shameless in using everything and anything that I come across in life. Um, which is not to say, really is not to say, that, I, that real people become my characters. Because I think most writers would say this, that every character they write is composite. You know, that you use elements of all your experience in life and bring them to that character or characters. Um, but I, I sometimes find myself feeling a bit uh, um, guilty about it because I do know that there are you know, moments in life when all of one's attention should be on the reality of what's happening as opposed to the potential fiction. And it's a sort of shocking confession really, but I, I think probably most grown-up writers would admit to it that a little section of their brain is thinking that's going to be great uh, on the page later.